Choosing a school for your child is no easy matter. Whether it's a public, private, parochial, or charter school, we're bombarded by stories that say this school is good, this school is bad. The scores go up, the scores go down, but schools and children are not test scores. If the test scores don't tell the story, then what should I be looking for? What we want are good schools for our kids. So what does a good school look like? A good school should be a place where children are given opportunities to work together cooperatively. A good school has classrooms in which children can learn from one another. In a good school, teachers know individual children, what their interests are, how they learn, and how they're progressing. Good schools are communities where teachers, parents, and children have a voice. In a good school, there is meaningful noise and children are active learners. Parents are part of the fabric of the school. Good schools also encourage teachers to become problem solvers, to explore how children learn, a place where teachers are encouraged to talk with one another. The whole room was really set up by someone who knew that there were going to be students with lots of different interests and that she was going to give them opportunities to explore those interests. You want to see that there's uh, room for them to imagine, room for them to imagine. And only the secret agents have the secret password to ultimately go in. You want to see that there's art supplies. Put it in here, then we'll do like Z, Z, No, no we can put it here. But take it. Se va a hablar, por ejemplo, del cuerpo humano, tener un esqueleto del cuerpo humano ese día. Sí, se van a hablar de una mata, de unas plantas, tener una planta ahí. Siempre variar algo con relación a la clase que se está dando. A mí me gustaría que en la escuela se vieran en los pasillos y en, las, y en el aula de la niña los trabajos hechos por los estudiantes. Mis hijos, como yo, Nos sentimos muy cómodos cuando nuestros idiomas se hablan en la escuela. Así yo sé que los otros padres también se sienten bienvenidos a la escuela cuando hablan su propio idioma. Many parents say how important it is to have schools that respect and reflect our families' languages, cultures, histories, and experiences. It's really critical that these are integrated into the curriculum so that students feel that they can connect with what they're learning and can see themselves really reflected in what's being taught. Eh, para mí lo importante no es lo que me diga la nota, es lo que yo pueda ver y comprobar. O sea, una nota es solo un número. We have extensive observations and assessments on our students. Exams are hard, you know, when you really think about it, because you tend to fit the child to the exam. You know, we look at all the skills and build on that. Have you read other Junie B. Jones? I read Junie B. Jones is almost a flower girl. Do you want to bring me up to date? Because I haven't read this book. So maybe you could tell me what yes. I need to know so I can jump um, in. Her grandfather bought Junie B. some um, mittens for no reason. No reason at all. It can be quite challenging, but the more you do it, the better you become. You take observation and base, and you can go back and look, okay, when the child was here in September, you know, the child was using X amount of vocabulary. Those anecdotes will tell you exactly 
the stage or the phase of development. Are those her mittens or not? It is, I think so. Why do you think so? Because she had black fairy mittens and she's all wearing pink. That's so why. you think maybe she'd have pink mittens, right? So this is my question for you. When I think about you as a reader, I think that you like a lot of nonfiction books. Is that true? And do I have the right picture of you? I mean, if, if you had your choice, because I think I sort of pushed you into reading a story, right? But what do you really like to read best? The value of what children do is more important to us than that end, those, all those correct answers with the smiley face, which would make them very happy, but it doesn't tell them anything. Other forms of assessment, it's just a fancy way of saying how do I know my child is learning, is portfolio. From the very beginning, children are always doing all kinds of stuff. You keep their work, and as they learn, you can actually see the changes and the progression. Edward, today, he showed his work and he said, I finally figured out how to make a circle. I was making ovals before, and now I can make a circle. So he's really worked on it, and um, he has... I had concerns because he wasn't as verbal as some of the other kids, or most of the other kids. He didn't seem to have an interest in story time. He wouldn't sit still for a book. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to have my son tested. There are all these things wrong with him. You know, something is wrong. In the block room, he had built two towers with a little space in between the towers. His bone picture machine, and he had told his friends and they had to be very still and had to be very quiet because he was going to take a picture of their bones and it was very important. And she explained to me that even though he's not writing on a piece of paper, he's coming up with these stories. Yo noté en mi hermana que ella estaba aprendiendo cuando estaba una vez en un supermercado y yo le dije, Gaby, eh, tengo un dilema, no sé qué producto escoger. Eh, entonces ella me dijo, no, fácilmente, haz el proceso de eliminación. Le digo, proceso de eliminación, ¿dónde aprendiste eso? Oh, en la escuela. We start with Tyra, and we count all the way around the room, only children's heads, and end up with Melanie. If you're counting by a hundred, what would Melanie's answer be? and I don't even have to get up and count everybody because I know there's 24 kids in our class and then I just add that um, times 100. I'm not all that interested in the actual facts but that they are going to be thinking as scientists would be thinking meaning that they're going to come up they're going to have a, an idea before a hypothesis about things, and then be able to do some experimentation that will prove or disprove what they're doing. I want to know why does the Earth move? The Earth moves so different places could be um, morning and night. Because it can't all be so sunny, we need to sleep too. Why is all the times the moon out and, and sometimes it's not. To be able to, um, to look at things through in a scientific way, a way that they can test theories that they have. I'm going on the seesaw. So it as this looks like mine, right? Mm -hmm. e, e. Yeah, the same. Yours is it's bright, mine is a little bit bright. Mine's just sparkling too, this one. One of the things I've seen develop all the way through is their, their understanding that on anything they hear about or read about or see, they can ask a question and then they are confident, just really comfortable, then finding out about that question or pursuing, you know, really doing research about whatever it is that they're that they're curious about. Um, the Native Americans, they taught them how to do things that they didn't know how to do, so they helped them out. Um, before, when Christopher Columbus found America, it was I think he thought it was India because it was all sandy and stuff. And I have a question about it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Christopher Columbus ever noticed that it was America, not India. 
from the kind of learning and from the kind of environment that she's in, kids are able to foster, take what they like, take what they're interested in, and over time, they're allowed to let that develop. It's not just the skill of research, but it's also a comfort and a confidence that, that this is what they can do. Now, when the, they're looking up a word, they just go to our shelf and take down our huge dictionary that has notes about roots and notes about usage. And, and they just assume that that's for them as much as it's for anyone else. A good school is not a collection of classrooms. It's a community where the voices of teachers, parents, and children all matter. In a good school, you can see how children are learning. In a good school, children are posing questions and exploring solutions. Test scores give us indirect information from one day. Teachers know direct information about children over time. Together, teachers and parents can see how children are learning and their voices matter.